Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating and editing 3D objects in Photoshop CS4 Extended. You will need Photoshop CS4 Extended to follow along with this tutorial. So when Adobe came out with Photoshop CS3, they included the ability to work with true 3D documents, true 3D objects, and now that they've moved on to CS4, they have also included the ability to actually create simple 3D objects right here within Photoshop. And there's some very cool things you can create and do. Matter of fact, this little cone you see here on uh, or in my document here was created entirely in Photoshop. And everything that you see about it, everything about this was created and edited right here in Photoshop. So we're going to take a look at how to create a shape similar to this and you know apply these textures to it and we're gonna talk a little bit about the 3d tools and how to use them and what you can use them for and all of that good stuff so let's get started the first thing we want to do well there are actually two things we want to do before we get started I'm just gonna minimize this big arrow contraption I don't really like using this at all you do not need to use this um, when you are working with 3d objects I almost never do like I said sometimes I do if I'm just coming in and kinda of playing around with rotating and spinning some stuff but basically to move it you just grab this little bar you can even make, you make it bigger or smaller by just dragging that little magnifying glass icon side to side or you can just minimize the whole thing by hitting the button to the left of the little bar and there you go it just goes up and kind of hides itself out of the way because the way I like working with my 3D objects is using the tools down here so 3D rotate tool is kind of what I sit on now I'm gonna shut this layer off we're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna create a brand new 3D object go up to the 3D menu come down to new shape from layer choose cone and we get a base 3D shape you can see with this 3D rotate tool, I can basically click this guy and just drag around, and I'm, you know, basically spinning him all over the place. Now, before we go any further, I do want to point out we have two sets of 3D tools. We have these tools here on top, which are the ones I'm using, this rotate, roll, pan, scale tools. We also have these other tools on the bottom. Now, these tools on the bottom work with what's called the camera, and you can just think of the camera as your view of the 3D object. This, yeah, you can see this is called yeah the 3D orbit tool instead of the 3D rotate tool the 3D roll view pan view walk view and zoom tool because what these do they don't actually edit your object you can see it does look like we're doing the same exact thing as before with this rotate tool but we're not we're rotating the camera's view in relation to the object not the object's actual rotation so it's hard to really understand what I'm saying but that's essentially what it is so if you want to move or scale a 3d object you want to use the tool set here on top not the tool set on the bottom so we have here the rotate tool and by the way anytime you're working with an object let me just really mess this object up I'm gonna kinda pull a little side to side here I'm gonna pan it over to here and I'm gonna scale it way out until we can barely see it. Let's say you do all of that and you look at it and you say, you know what, I really don't like that. I want to bring it back to the way it was. Well, all you have to do is hit the little home button. It brings it back to the way the object last was. So, there we go. I'm just going to pan it right back to the way I had it before I really started messing it up. So there we go. We have it back sort of like the way I want it. So let's take a look now at how we can start covering this object with some sort of texture. Really make it look kind of cool. Let's start our texturing by texturing the bottom of this cone. You can see here I've got bottom material that default texture. Here are my 3D layer. These are both of our textures for this particular object because we really only have two surfaces, the bottom of this and the cone that wraps around the top. So I'm going to double click bottom material default texture and you can see we get a blank Photoshop document that is open. Wonderful. What we're going to do is go filter render clouds. We're just going to throw some clouds in here just for the sake of putting something in there. We're also going to go filter uh, blur, radial blur, and we'll just throw a nice, pretty heavy spinning radial blur. I'm just, amount is 50 there, right in here on this document. There we go. I'm going to hit Commander Control L to increase the contrast, increase the blacks, and increase the whites. There we go. So we've got a nice, heavy contrast. I can even give this a color. Commander Control U to open up the Hue Saturation dialog box. I'm going to choose Colorize. And I'm going to maybe darken it a little bit, increase that saturation a bit, and maybe we'll make this 
And we'll just make it a blue like that. Hit OK. I'm going to Command or Control S to save it. Command or Control W to delete or yeah to close that document. We haven't deleted the texture. Just closing the document and check this out. I'm going to grab my rotate tool. I'm just going to spin this guy around and look at what we have on the bottom. We have that texture. If I can get this to rotate, there we go. We have that texture that we just created. Now it does appear pretty dark. We're going to take a look at editing some of the 3D lighting options a little later. I'm going to hit the Home button to bring this guy back and just sort of rotate him around roughly the way I had them before. Now we want to create sort of this same effect that I have on this 3D object. How do we do it? Well, let's take a look at that. I'm going to close this. We're going to get started by creating the checkered pattern. So I'm going to double click the layer 2 here. You can see that's that texture. If I go back to my 3D document. That's the texture we're working on, layer 2. It's just this blank Photoshop document. The first thing you may notice is that it is actually a different shape than the other document because this is you know, a longer, thinner shape that we need to create in order to wrap around that cone. So let's grab the paint bucket tool and set it to paint a pattern. I'm going to open up my patterns and we're looking for a default Adobe pattern. I believe it is in patterns, just regular old patterns. So what I've done here is just selected the patterns thumbnail. We're coming over here and choosing this little flyout menu. I'm going to choose patterns. I'm going to hit OK. And yes, here's the little checkered pattern that I used. I'm just going to dump that right into there. Now I'm going to save this, Command or Control S, and then Command or Control W to del or close that document, excuse me. And you can see we sort of have this strange looking pattern which we have applied. I'm going to rotate the camera here so I can get a decent look at what's happening. You can see we have this, you know, it just sort of, you know, overlays over the uh, cone without really wrapping around it. I want it to wrap more around it. So I'm going to double click on that layer too. And to really make this circular, we're going to go Filter, Distort, Polar Coordinates. And there we go. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see what we've done. It really looks kind of crazy. But this center circular area is the area we're really going to be using. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to hit Command or Control W to close it. And now back in our other document, you can see that our 3D object has updated. And we now have a much cooler effect on our cone. Let's go about adding those red stripes. So I'm going to double click on Layer 2 again. This is that Layer 2 uh, texture. And what I want to do is grab my gradient tool. I want to choose this gradient right here. It's the striped and transparent gradient. And I'm going to set my foreground color. It's actually the foreground color it's going to use. And I'm going to choose a, not a bright red, just sort of one of these reds that's hovering around the brightest reds. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to, oh, by the way, yes, this is an important one, set it to a radial gradient. And uh, I'm not going to check reverse. I'm going to make sure reverse is not checked on. And I'm just going to pull it straight out of the center, maybe a little over halfway to the edge of the document. Okay, so we've got this nice sort of red shape happening. However, I did not do that on a new layer. I want to create a new layer to do that on. So again, pull it out almost halfway or just beyond halfway, excuse me, to the edge of the document, straight to the side. I pulled it to the right. Now I'm going to hit Command or Control T, and I'm just going to pull this out so this bullseye matches the rounded shape of our checkerboard sh you know, shape there. Okay, you can see I've created a nice little effect there. We can try some blend modes if we want, maybe multiply, something like that. That looks kind of cool. Hit Command or Control J to duplicate that and maybe set this guy to overlay to brighten it up a little bit. You can see just like that. That looks kind of neat. And there we go. I'm going to hit Command or Control S to save that. Command or Control W to close that. And you can see that our cone has been updated. However, it doesn't really look metal. Whereas over here, this one, almost looks like it's metal. So that's pretty cool. How do we do that? Well, we need to begin playing with the intensity of the, the lights that are lighting this 3D object. We can do that by going Window, 3D, and opening up the 3D panel. That's this guy right here. Now, what we are going to do is we basically have our bottom material here. And, well, or, excuse me, and by bottom, we've got this object here on the bottom. But this, this entire 3D object just references this 3D layer. That's basically what I'm trying to say is we don't need to worry about this object here on the bottom. Okay, so bottom up here is not this guy. But you can ignore this whole bottom thing anyway. And also you can ignore cone. Those have to do with the 3D objects. We're concerned with these three lights. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose infinite light uh, one and I'm going to increase the intensity. Okay, we're at one. I'm going to try pushing it up to two. Uh, push it up a little more. This is probably the light that is lighting the bottom of it, so we can't see what it's doing. Let's go to Infinite Light 2 and push the intensity of this up. You can see that's the light that's coming down on the top. 
That's a little too bright for my liking. I'm going to push it back. Yeah, somewhere around 1.5. And then light number three here. We're going to really push this one up because this must be the guy lighting the bottom here. I want a lot of light coming up from the bottom. Maybe push it up to around 3.5 like so. Now, what I'm going to do, just out of curiosity, I'm going to rotate this object. Or excuse me, I'm going to rotate my view. I don't want to rotate the object at this point now that we're getting the lights all set up. Yeah, you can see that we've really lightened up the bottom. So light number one here must be this light on the bottom. There you go. It is the light on the bottom. So we're going to really you know, push it out of this world. Not quite that badly, but more like that. There we go. I'm going to rotate my view back around so I can get a look or get a glance at the front of my object that I've just created. And there we go. That's really all I need to do in the 3D panel. And there we have it. We've just created a 3D cone. Now, working with 3D objects in Photoshop is going to take a little getting used to, and there's just a lot of stuff. There's all these different views and just so many things that I couldn't cover in one little short video tutorial and all kinds of things, maybe some things that I've even done that you're scratching your head thinking, what, what did he just do? But, you know, this is just meant to be the bare bones basics of 3D objects in Photoshop and just kind of helping you create a pretty cool looking uh, object. And by the way, I can just grab the move tool here and move this 3D object as if it were anything else. So I can just position these guys side by side. Ooh, make sure I create or select, excuse me, the correct layer. There we go. And you can see working with 3D objects in Photoshop, while it is kind of complicated to get started, and there's just a lot of things you have to understand, there's really nothing that is so important that you, you just can't get started without it. Nothing like that. So don't be worried about, you know, jumping in and, you know, you know completely messing something up. Just jump right in and start playing around with it, and you're, you'll start to figure things out. And, uh, you know, it's a whole lot of fun. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with 3D objects in Photoshop, and it's a very, very useful thing to do if you're creating uh, product mock-ups or using it in all kinds of different types of artwork, even photography. There are things you can do with it that are really pretty cool. So that's it for this one. Really, the basics of creating a 3D object here in Photoshop. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. I hope you didn't get sidetracked by, you know, all these little small tools, all the little things that you know we couldn't get around to talking about. But hopefully, with your new confidence in working with 3D in Photoshop. You'll be able to go in there and play around with some of these tools and figure out what some of them do, some of the things maybe that I've missed, and really get to know 3D inside of Photoshop. It's a great, great new uh, feature of Photoshop. So, highly recommend you check it out. And also, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, if you've learned something, please go check out the website. That is tutvid.com, T-U-T-V-I-D.com, for more great video tutorials. And I thank you very much for watching.